You know, my last talk about Quake was kind of a downer. Let's have a happier note with more fun in this talk. So uh, one of the ideas we had at id Software was after we finished Doom, then we were gonna do a flight sim. It was gonna be a really fun flight sim like F-15 or F-19 uh, a stealth fighter. That's what we called it originally back in the Micro Bros. And we were gonna have a plane with a billion guns. It was gonna be part comic. You'd fly around and basically you're blowing up everything on the map. It would be like super, super fun, great action game. Everyone wanted to do a flight sim. But after we finished Doom, we didn't have the wherewithal to actually do a flight sim yet. Um, John Carmack was working on another 3D thing, so we said, well, we don't, we can't do the next game yet, so let's do Doom 2 in the meantime. Then by the time we finished Doom 2, before we could do the flight sim, we like, we did Quake, and then we realized we were only going to do things forever. It's hard for a computer game company, unless it's super gigantic, to actually move into a different genre. You know the old genre, you know how to do the old genre, learning everything new takes a year or so for your personnel, it's just tough. So they didn't push. This is not unique to id Software, it happened to Ensemble Studios too. Like when I was brought into Ensemble Studios, I came there fresh from doing Quake, right? So the Ensemble Studio guys said, hey Sandy, let's do a shooter, we love Quake and Doom, you can do a shooter for us. And I was like, yeah, sure, not a problem. So. Before you do the shooter, they'll work on this RTS game. So I'll work on the RTS game. Says, now we'll do the shooter. Well, we have to do Age of Empires 2 first. So we do Empires 2. Then, well, don't work on the shooter yet, Sandy. Instead, do um, the expansion for uh, Age of Empires. Excuse me, Age of Empires 2, which is uh, uh, the Conquerors. I said, okay. Then we're going to do Age of... And we never got around to the shooter. Obviously, Ensemble Studios never did a shooter. So uh, so we didn't get out of the rut. It is possible to get out of the rut. I remember that, um, they, that uh, well, Blizzard is a lot bigger than us. I mean, they got out of the rut, but but uh, but other companies have gotten out of that rut, but the companies I worked at were always too small to do it. So let's talk about the nail gun and Quake. So we didn't have a machine gun and Quake. We said we had a nail gun. Now, the reason for this was twofold. One was we're shooting spikes. You can see the spikes fire into the wall and sit there. And it was it was cool 3D for John because everything is about that. And I'm not, I think that's a good idea. So, but the nail gun also is a, is a absolute reference to nine inch nails, right? It has, the, I mean, the ammo boxes have the NIN symbol on them for Trent Reznor. No, I'm not a fan of Trent Reznor and his, and his music. I mean, I'm not against that. I just, it's not what I listen to, you know? But everyone else at id was super excited. They said, Sandy, we got Trent Reznor to do the music for Quake. And I was like, uh, okay, who's Trent Wesner? I said, Nine Inch Nails? I go, okay, uh, sure, whatever. That's, I guess that's great. Um, so Trent Wesner actually came to the studio and all the people went out to eat with them and I didn't for some reason. And I can't remember why I didn't, but maybe I should have. So they went out and they had some other guys there. And when they were out at dinner, American McGee, who was along with him, had PCP put into his drink, into his drink. And he got like really sick and had to go home and he was sick for the next day. Now, we don't know who like stuck American with the PCP. We know it was not Trent Reznor or any of his guys. There was a claim that it was someone from Pantera because they were there too, but I don't know. I have no one to accuse. All I know is that American McGee got PCP and he was unhappy about it. In general, it is software. None of us were like taking any kind of drugs. A refreshing change from Chaosium. Anyway, there it is. Trent Reznor at a dinner with uh, American McGee uh, was was there when the PCP be given to him, but we know it wasn't Trent. That's my story. Next, not invented here. Id Software had a really bad case of not invented here. Now this is the concept, in case you don't know, of you. there's a cool idea, but it didn't come from inside your group or your company or your school or your um, whatever your, your profession. And so it must be bad sight unseen because only people from the in group can have good ideas. This is a really prevalent thing among game companies. And the reason it is, is that game companies have to feel they're the best at what they do. They're really good at doing games. They, they, they're they the small crew we're trying to do the best games on the market. And therefore, if we're doing the best games in the market, everyone else must be doing worse games. Now, um, Ensemble, id Software had a super bad case of this. Um, I remember Unreal was looking pretty good, the Unreal Engine, but there was a lot of smack talk about how, oh, Unreal's really dumb because it carves out its hollow spaces from a big cube while we build them like carpenters out of slabs as though it mattered, you know? Now, when I went on to Ensemble Studios, me and some other guys, the designers in general, fought really hard against the not invented here thing. We would say, look at this game. It doesn't do everything the way we do. In many ways, it's worse than ours. Some ways it beats us. Let's look at it. And I've tried really hard to do that, helped by my team at, at uh, 
Peterson games. So we will look at other people's games all the time and play them. And so anyway, but id Software didn't do it. And I think that in the long run hurt it because it was only to look at the cool new things that were going on with other companies. The Jaguar, John Carmack was super excited about the Jaguar and he wanted us to do a game on it. And everyone in the company from the lowliest me up to the highest end owners said, John, the Jaguar is dumb. No one will buy a Jaguar. It's going to fail for sure. Uh, don't do a game on it. He said, no, because it's super fun to program for us, so we're doing it. So he did it, and no one else would help him on it. So guess who helped him on it? Me. I got assigned. I had to redo all the levels in Doom to fit on the Jaguar. So we had to like super simplify them. Monsters had to be like a single direction. It was all this stuff I had to do, changing all the levels so they fit in the Jaguar. So I did that. So that was my job for about six weeks making everything fit on the Jaguar because when nobody wanted to do a job, I got to do the job. I had to be the grown up, I guess. So the lightning gun in Quake. I love the lightning gun. Everyone loves the lightning gun. The lightning gun uses the exact same basic 3D art that the hammer was going to use for Quake. Like when Quake, the guy hit the ground with the hammer, the crack went out. That's how we did the lightning like that, except, you know, in 3D instead of 2D. Uh, we also early on got the idea that when it fired into water, it would electrify the whole the whole water thing. And that made for some really interesting uh, interactions, which was cool. So early deathmatch was really fun on Quake. Like to test it, we said, let's try it. We made, basically, we made a giant box and had guys spawn up in the air so they'd fall down. And then just everyone ran around this giant box with gray slab walls and killed each other. And we played that way too much, which was, it was really stupid, but they just literally were running around and shooting each other in a big box. And that was the fun thing to do because there hadn't been as much the same kind of deathmatch before. I mean, there had been deathmatch obviously in, in Doom, but you know, it was like big deal. So finally we started to make ed dedicated deathmatch levels. John Carmack was really good at those. I didn't make any, I felt I was better at puzzles and traps and puzzles and traps have no place in deathmatch. Oh, one more thing. So one of the things I, I'm a, I'm a believing Christian, right? And I don't mind putting images of Christ in, into my games. I'm not an iconoclast and Quake has images of Christ. I don't think they're blasphemous. They're they're kind of art, artistic levels, artistic images there, right? But um, so so I didn't object to having images of Christ. So John uh, Romero, who is like not a believing Christian, which is fine. You know, I still got along with him. He uh, he decided to have a he was using textures to do things. So he made a floor plate and it had a picture of Jesus's face on it. So you'd go step on Jesus's face and that would open a bridge. And so I went to John, I saw it in level. I was like, I, took, I said, hey, John, he goes, what? He says, um, you know that cool floor plate you have in the shovel? He says, yeah. I said, how about putting something that you step on besides Jesus' face? And he goes, and he had never thought about it. He goes, oh, good call. So we changed it. So there's my strike for Christianity in, in Quake. So that's some fun tidbits. Hope you enjoyed this peek into constructing a uh, game classic. Uh, in other news, you should like me with hit the like button. You should consider subscribing to get more stuff from me. I publish mostly every Friday. If you want a reminder, you can sign up for notifications. I don't have a Patreon because I don't think it's right for a business owner, but I am a business owner. Check out my Peterson Games YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it. Also, right now, check out this awesome product for sale on the petersongames.com website. Thanks.